Welcome students to our first video of the introduction to microcontrollers. There are different types and families or implementations of microcontrollers. One company, Microchip, is responsible for the famous TIC family of microcontrollers and it has developed a video on what a micro microcontroller is. This video is called What is a microcontroller? Uh, hopefully you have seen this video before, before this, this class. So, as seen as the, in the previous video, a microcontroller is basically a structure that integrates in a single chip a microprocessor, a memory, and a number of peripheral interfaces. This is a typical microcontroller, which is the AT Mega 16, uh, which is not the microcontroller we will be using, but I just wanted to show you one. An important part of microcontrollers is the way they are built or organized. Uh, this is known as the architecture of the microcontrollers. And of course, there are different ways to categorize a microcontroller architecture. Uh, and actually, there are more than the ones I'm going to show you, but those are the ones we're going we're gonna to see. The first one is computer architecture. The second one is instruction set architecture. And the third one is called microarchitecture, and we will see what, what those mean. So, computer architecture it's uh, depending on the connection of two key components in a processor you can have two architectures and these two key components are basically the instructions and the data okay data is basically where you store information such as variables uh, print data or read values of some for instance of some sensor and the instruction code it's what to do with that information is what the, the processor is going to do so this is the Harvard architecture. Notice that two components, the two components that I was telling you, which is data memory here and the instruction code here. Notice that those two components are separated by different paths. Uh, these paths are called buses. And in this architecture, which is called, again, it's called Harvard, we have a separate bus for data and a separate bus for instructions. Let's see a demo of how this of how this works. For instance, if I want to access the address zero of my data memory, what I have to do is I have to write a zero through this bus, or which is called the control and address bus. So I would have to write a zero here. Uh, with that, I'm telling the microcontroller, okay, please give me some information or give it the information that is stored at address zero. And the microcontroller is going to answer me, or, or it's going to respond with some information. Uh, what information? Well, whatever is stored, which I'm calling it X, uh, the X value, uh, the microcontroller is going to give it to me because I asked for it with the address zero. Now, what happens if I ask for address zero, but for the instruction that is stored at address zero? Well. In this architecture, it is possible. So for instance, if I want to access address zero, but from the instruction, all I have to do is ask the microcontroller, but through this different path. And again, I'm going to ask the microcontroller for the same address, for address zero. And of course, the microcontroller is going to respond with some different information than the one I called X previously. Uh, that information is going to be different, okay? I'm, I'm going to call this information Y, and of course, this information is going to be different than the previous one that I mentioned, which was X. This is one of the main characteristics of the Harper architecture. We have two paths, one that is called the data bus, which is the path or the bus for data, and we, we have another bus, which is called the instruction bus. The other type of architecture is the von Neumann architecture. Notice that in this architecture, in order to access data and or instructions, the same path is used. Let's see a demo. Again, let's suppose I, I want to access address zero. The problem is that if I want to access address zero, as we saw in the previous example, now notice that the instruction and the data memory are shared. That means that if I ask for address zero, 
of course I'm gonna get a response. But that response is going to be either instruction or data. If you remember on the previous slide, address zero could be instruction or it could be data, depending on which part I choose. However, in this situation, address zero can only be or instruction or data. So what happens? What happens if I want to add access instructions and data? So basically, in this architecture, what is done is that uh, we define some some range. So, for instance, let's say uh, starting from address zero to address nine nine. Uh, is this is just an example? Uh, this is going to be instructions, and we define a different a different range. For instance, from from address one hundred to address 199 okay we have data now let's talk a little about instruction set architecture another way to differentiate a microcontroller is through its instruction set an instruction set it's a collection of low level instructions called opcodes which is machine language and two of the most common uh, instruction set architectures are uh, CISC, which is Complex Instruction Set Computer, and RISC, which stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. Basically, CISC, as its name implies, has more complex operations that can perform different operations on different types of data. RISC, on the other side, tries to implement only the most used operation in its instruction set relying on routines to cover the problem of having less processing power. I recommend you that you see the following page to see a practical difference between uh, CISC and RISC. Now let's talk about microarchitecture. This is also known as computer organization and this is the way an instruction set architecture is implemented in a microcontroller. Uh, you can think of it as, an, as a block diagram of all the internal components of the microcontroller and how they are connected in order to perform the instruction sets defined uh, in, the in the instruction set architecture. Since this is very specific, uh, a very specific implementation of computer architecture and the instruction set architecture, it varies a lot from microcontroller to microcontroller. Now, why all of this is important? Well, first of all, so we can see the difference between different brands and families or models or even versions of different microcontrollers. And with this information, we can choose the appropriate uh, microcontroller for, for our specific solution. And I, I leave you with this image that uh, is perfect for this, uh, for this idea. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.